Hey there! I'm Sarah Ann Christman, the author of the Tales of Chetsamoka, and today I'm going to tell you a little bit about Victorian circuses, like the one our friends visit in A Trip and a Tumble. In the days before films and videos flooded into people's lives, the arrival of a circus in a community was a major event. Circuses were huge in the Victorian era, both figuratively and in some cases quite literally. Live shows of impressive athletes defying death were wildly popular, and the most successful circus companies had room for thousands of spectators in their tents. The story in Book 5 of The Tales of Chetsamoka, A Trip and a Tumble, was inspired by an 1885 newspaper account of an actual visit of Robinson Circus to Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Robinson Circus was so large that spectators would sometimes grumble that they couldn't hear the ringmaster in the center of the enormous Big Top. A moving city of expert equestrian riders, vigorous acrobats, silly clowns, exotic animals, and enough skilled performers to make one's head spin showed Victoria a true three-ring circus, with acts going on in two sawdust rings and a hard stage all at the same time. And that wasn't even the whole show of what they could have done. Robinson Circus hired two separate steamships, the Olympian and the Emma Hayward, to bring their performers, animals, and equipment to Victoria, but even with two ships, they still didn't have enough room to bring all their parade chariots or even all their show ponies. They did bring their menagerie, which included five elephants, a three-horned ox, tigers, hyenas, water buffalo, sacred cattle from India, a sloth bear, regular bears, a giraffe, a camel, and a dromedary, a taper, performing dogs, a jaguar, dancing monkeys, and enough animals in general to constitute a natural history lesson. As for the human performers, Robinson Circus did indeed have a high wheel cyclist who performed bike tricks on the tightrope, as well as a bevy of lady acrobats who performed trials of strength and agility on the trapeze, and an especially nervy performer named Aida who dove nearly 100 feet from the top of the main tent to a network of ropes below. The journalist who wrote up the piece for the newspaper reported that to recount the wonderful Strength and nerve displayed by both males and females would be impossible. Suffice it that the immense audience was almost wearied with a series of startling events. When I was reading up on circuses in preparation for writing a trip in a tumble, I was fascinated to learn that a lot of circus performers are really shy, despite the fact that they have to be on display to earn their living. Linda Simon's book, The Greatest Shows on Earth, A History of the Circus, gives an account of a modern anthropologist who traveled with a circus and observed that the performers rarely ventured into the towns or cities where they performed because they didn't feel safe away from their community of fellow circus performers. I noticed this theme in various interviews and 19th century accounts of circus folk as well, and it was what gave me the idea for our shy bicyclist Peter Swift, who is perfectly comfortable performing acrobatics on a high wheel bicycle while riding across a tightrope wire but who's absolutely terrified of the idea of attending a high society dinner party. He only works up the courage to attend the dinner when Felix tells him he should just treat it as another type of performance. Relying on his showmanship to compensate for his shyness makes him stand out in the pre-dinner games, and a high society belle falls head over heels for him. While the idea for Shy Peter emerged from reading about socially timid performers, his friend Makomo is a bolder personality. He's a composite of a number of different Victorian beast tamers, including Sergano Alikimusa, who played tug-of-war with his lions and liked to show off the scars they gave him. Historically, there were a few different Victorian beast tamers named Makomo. The first one was so successful that other Victorian beast tamers borrowed his name. It's interesting to note that the original Makomo comes up pretty often in 19th century writings about circuses, they called him the King of Lion Tamers, and he was much admired. Later 20th century accounts often wrote him out of the history, though. That's why I like using primary sources for my research, 
they help me find all sorts of fascinating stories that have been forgotten over time. If circuses are at all a point of interest for you, I highly recommend reading some of the accounts of them that were written in the late 19th century. Here's a list of some of my favorites. They'll give you a front row seat to some of the greatest shows in history and let you in on circus stories and secrets, from the tragic accidents of acrobats to the intimate lives of performers who mended their own costumes off stage between acts, to tricks people tried to see the shows for free when they thought they could, and the scandalous true story of a politician's wife who ran off with a circus lover and whose husband then hired a troop of cowboys to invade the Big Top and bring her home. Most of these antique books are available to download for free using the Google Books advanced search function. Gabriel and I already made a video about how to get books this way. If you missed it, or if you need a refresher, just look up the video titled Research Tips that I posted on my channel on December 30th, 2019. When you're reading, you can gasp along with thousands of other spectators, pet the lions, or fly with the acrobats themselves. Thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure and give it a nice thumbs up and remember to tell your friends about the books. Happy reading! <laughs>